So let's play a game called, is it racist? <laughs> so a black guy, welcome Modern Talk, is this is Modern Talk. Whoa, we're here. We just made it. <laughs> Thank you for getting here on time. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was. So I'm living in 2023, I don't even know. You're already in 2023. This is still 2021, two, two. Wow, can't even count, dude. I don't know what freaking year I'm in. Um, yeah, I mean, in some ways I still am living in 2021. Yes, dude. Um, but yeah, I'm living in 2023. I'm, I'm so far ahead. I'm like 15 weeks ahead of putting these out. And, uh, and so I'm in 2023 because it's October, late October, uh, the 12th to be exact. Um, who cares? Uh, I'm glad I'm doing these, if nothing else, uh, to document some of my shirts because <laughs> I don't know. I like, I like being able to wear all my shirts and they could, you know, die in a fire soon, or I could die in a fire and then my shirts will live on. There'll be a probably big auction for my shirts because this podcast will blow up because I'll be dead and I should kill myself to get my numbers up. Um, <laughs> I put out my second one and nothing happened again. Yes, dude. Not gonna get discouraged. A yes, dude. Okay. Um, so things, some of the things I talked about in therapy, I'm rip roaring right now. I don't know why this is happening. I feel like I'm gonna get through everything in 10 minutes, which would be fine. That's the podcast. Uh, it's so loud because we're right next to a um, highway and motorci motorcycles like to be all the time get a tesla one so it's quiet uh i don't even know if they make those but i would definitely get one i really do <laughs> i like i like the idea of mo motor i can't say motorcycles for some reason without having to really think about it it's like saying vulnerable to me those are the same thing can't say it um <laughs> I really like the idea of motorcycles. Did I talk about this before? I hope so. <laughs> no, um, I like the idea of like feeling free, like not, you know, you have like four feet total or something in a car that you could kind of drift and that's it. And then you're, you're in a car crash. Uh, but with motorcycles and stuff, you have more freedom to, even if you want to just have fun with it and like kind of swear, like not swerve, but um, sway just to, you know, make things more fun. Uh, you could do that as long as you're super aware of your surroundings still, but you know, that has to be happening all the time when you're driving. So, uh, and you could like swerve in and out of people while a lot safety, safety, <laughs> a lot more safely uh, than if you just had a regular car because it's so much wider, obviously. But then obviously if you get too overzealous, then you get clipped and then you die. So that's my motorcycle tangent because of motorcycles. But why do they, why are they so loud? That's, that's a deal breaker for me. And I know people like get into it, like they really lean into it as motorcyclists. Um, but they probably call themselves bikers and that's why I'm not one of those. Um, Cause I call those motorcyclists. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I just, I want, I don't want it to be loud. I just want it, I want it to be loud as a, as a car, which I have a hybrid. So it's like basically deathly quiet. Um, the loudest thing that happens in a car is uh, the AC. Um, so that's really crazy, honestly. Oh, I'm gonna yawn on you folks, dude. I'm sorry, um, my parents are in town and so I've been hanging out with them, but I still wanna get work done and stuff like that, like this or editing the podcast. So, um, so I like hang out with them late, like play cards until 10 or 11. Yeah, I think last night it was 11. Um, and then I get up at six because he's dedicated, he's the hardest working person. That's one of my affirmations. Uh, I am the hardest working person. 
So uh, I have to live up to that. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm tired. I've, I've, uh, I talked about in therapy that um, like this is kind of, I don't know if it's, this is the right way to say it, but good practice for if I have a girlfriend at any point, <laughs> because like anytime I'm free, I go with my parents and I don't know, it's tough because I would have to cut back on girlfriend slash family time if this was long term because I'm getting way less done obviously because you know I'm only doing carving out this time in the morning while they're still like sleeping or getting ready to for the day with coffee and whatever. I stay I stay ready with the propel water. Um so so it's tough but um everything for me like relates back to a past relationship or a possible future relationship or just that and I need to work on that more but um, that's just how I think I don't know that's probably bad because you don't want to you don't want to think of everything you don't want to relate you want to be yourself you don't want to relate everything to someone else in the past or someone who's possibly who might not even exist in the future which is insane so um dude this podcast is so good why, why is no one listening to it am i a bad marketer probably i think dude marketing is so stupid it should be the best thing is the best thing and everyone knows it not that this is the best but it's good enough for people to listen to for sure but um i don't want to sound bitter because you know i don't do this you know, totally, you know, like I do this because I like it. It's not like I'm doing this just for the validation or whatever. And I do it for you, but I also enjoy doing it. So it's a two way street. Um, I mean, I'm obviously doing it when no one's listening. So, you know, my love for the game is real. What's back? It's movie time. <laughs> Uh, I watched the movie, it wasn't an 80s movie, I'm sorry for you 80s babies or whatever, uh, that love those, if they do, <laughs> again, I don't know if anyone even listens, but, uh, <laughs> remember the Titans, have you heard of it, have you listened to it, have you put it on the background, um, it's really good, uh, it's, they try to tackle, um, racism, so the, the premise is, a football team on the first segregated, unsegregated uh, high school in the country, I think, or in the South, maybe, or maybe just Tennessee or wherever they're from. Um, not, not Tennessee, because Tennessee Titans I'm thinking of, but I think it was, oh, it's Virginia, um, where I went to college. Um, not where I went to college, but uh, the same state. Um, so they try to tackle race, which is very ambitious. And I guess it was a Disney affiliated movie because it's on Disney Plus now. I don't know exactly how that works. Maybe it was Warner Brothers. No, that's that's HBO Max. No one cares. Um, <laughs> so they tackle racism in this Disney movie. Well, it's on Disney Plus. I don't want to. You know, I don't flimsy up the numbers here. So. Um, and they also tackle homosexuality kind of a little bit. That's a big bite for any movie alone, let alone a Disney Plus movie. Um, and it was two, It was made in 2000, so that's kind of extra... There's a dust particle. Uh, it's kind of extra... <laughs> that's how you know how present I am, dude. I catch a dust particle. Um, yeah, 2000s movie, which is, you know, way before any wokeness or stuff like that. Um, so in the gay part of it is uh, the, there's a new kid. They're, they're already, like, in camp. I don't think they started any games yet. Um, they're in training camp before games where they do practices a bunch of times. I'm trying to make it accessible for people that haven't seen it and don't even know much about football because it's way bigger than football, obviously, um, this movie, which is, I think, why 
it's so good. It's like anyone can make a good football movie. It's like they lose at first and then they win and in the end. Good football story. Um, so there's a new kid uh, that kisses the captain of the football team and he's the linebacker, which is like, you know, the toughest position. Um, I don't know if this was a, I, I don't fully understand the reasoning behind it. And I think because it was the 2000s, they didn't like hammer it home, which I like. Uh, Cause it seems like now they're like, I did that because I love being gay. And you know, that's great that you love being gay, but no one really says that in real life. It just seems like bad writing in a movie. Um, yeah, they, they, they seem, yeah, you, in any, in anything, in any writing, you don't want to hammer things on the head. You want to be more nuanced with it, dude. So, that, I don't know. That's my criticism of um, bad writing in movies nowadays. But, uh, so yeah, I don't know if this was a version of him picking a fight with the biggest guy in jail or whatever. Um, but like a way weirder version and they don't, I don't think he was really gay, but they definitely talked about it. Cause they were like, I mean, you're gay, right? You, you don't have to, you know, I, I'm, I'm your roommate. So I should probably know they do that, that scene in the movie. And he's like, cause he doesn't actually say, he's like, are you, are you re really, really, are you, is that, is that something that you're... And then he's like, what, man? I don't... <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's like, just say it. I, I don't know. And he's like, I mean, come on. you. I mean, your roommate, you got to... If I'm... I mean, it's not no big deal, but it's just what I'm, you know. <laughs> it's one of those, like, he never finishes a sentence things. Then the first day of school, when they integrate, uh, you know, both sides, they... In a mingling, um, <laughs> inter intermingle. Um, everyone's protesting, like one side saying the other side shouldn't be with each other and stuff like that. Uh, and then there's a group of boys that um, <laughs> that bully the new kid, which who's from California, and which is so weird to me because, like, you just hate everyone. Like you, you don't like anyone that didn't grow up in your town. Is that is that the deal? Why? How does that help anyone? Um, so they said they don't want him here either. They said that and in the movie and then with a great performance by the bully's sidekick. Uh, and I'll show a clip here. We don't need you here either, kid. You hear what he said? Did it happen yet? Ryan Gosling's in this movie. So it's automatically Academy Award winning movie, you know? Uh, it's really crazy. There's a lot of good people in this movie, but it, it's a young Ryan Gosling. I think that's really cool and funny. And he has a really small part, which is even funnier. Um, <laughs> there's a guy in it. I don't know his name, but he's a lineman and uh, he is so good as a character and he's so good as an actor as well. Um, he's so fearless as an actor. He, he doesn't, um, he isn't afraid to be vulnerable because uh, he's, he's uh, one of the white guys and he, okay, the good guys. <laughs> Just kidding, completely 100% kidding. Uh, I don't think I'd be talking about this movie and love this movie so much if I was racist like that. Um, I'm racist in other ways. Um, like, uh, what's a good, what's a, <laughs> what's a, oh, uh, Italians have really good food and that's racist and I'm sorry, but, um, you know, that's how it is. Uh, so he, he, he sings this like kind of soul, solely song um, and obviously it's like not in his range or whatever. Uh, he just doesn't, I, I don't think he could sing any song, but especially, um, 
a song that's not particularly attributed to white people. Um, this is like a little bit tricky territory. I thought it'd be, I, I guess I didn't think about it that much, but um, I mean, even talking about this stuff is, is tough. Um, and yeah, so he, he really, he really goes for the singing, but he can't sing, which is, I just love that he was cool enough to do that. And then the character is, um, uh, he's cute, dude. He's so cute. Like he just treats everyone the same and, uh, being like absolutely resolute about equality and, um, and he just like so doesn't buy into that stuff and it's so beautiful and like the idea that that could happen because obviously there's those kids that hate everyone that's not someone they grew up with uh and then and then there are some people who just like have no hate in them um and those people are rare but it's beautiful when you when you see that person um and so he's he's in the movie and then there's a little girl in it who's who grows up to be a like pretty biggish star um hayden penitentiary i think something like that uh but she's so believable it's unbelievable how believable she is uh she's she's so passionate about as a football daughter um of a coach and uh, it's just so cool. And someone's here, uh, but it's all good. Um, and then, dude, there's there's this moment, I almost don't wanna, like it's too good that I don't even wanna say it if you haven't seen it yet. Oh, man, it's so good. But when I was reminded of it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so so oh, good the two actors are just so good in general um but they really bring it like those one-on-one -on -one scenes you can't beat a one-on-one -on -one scene in my opinion um you could like really explore the space as an actor um yeah i gotta make a note of that uh if i ever make another movie or something um I just love those one-on-one -on -one scenes. They're so intimate, even if they're not. And like, so they're in football pads, it's after practice. One guy says to the other, uh, you have a bad attitude, man. And then uh, the other guy goes, attitude, attitude reflect leadership, leadership okay. captain. <laughs> and that is such a mic drop moment. And that was the end of the scene because where do you go from there? It's like, yeah, yeah, you won. All right, I'll have to work on it. Uh, and that's like kind of the implied thing. And it's so good. Um, and there's nothing better than the scene where they're in the locker room. They just like started to gel as a team and uh, they all sing together, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. And if you know the movie, you, that's maybe the only scene that you remember from that movie. Cause it's just like such a feel good moment and it's such a good song and um it's just beautiful uh then dude this is my favorite part of the whole movie i guess i just said you know but it's not as memorable um this next my favorite part is not as memorable as the singing scene um so the starting qb goes down then the backup isn't sure he's ready. I'm just breaking down the beats of it and you should watch it if, maybe I'll, I'll see if I could play it. I don't know what the rules are exactly. Um, so the starting QB goes down, the backup QB isn't sure he's ready. Then the head coach gives him a pep talk. And then this is kind of what I was talking about where like the team loses, but then they win in the end. This is kind of that, I guess I'm spoiling it, but, um, uh, this is a good example of that. And then the backup comes into the huddle, uh, like newly rejuvenated from the pep talk from the head coach. Um, 
and then he comes in with charisma and he's like hey guys you haven't seen a football injury before let's go we we got this i got you and uh the first play he hip checks the guy that hurt the other qb so he tells one of the one of the linemen not to block the guy that just hurt uh the other quarterback and um and so the quarterback throws it really quick and then the guy's like at his face by the time right as he throws it and then after he throws it he like ducks and then the guy goes flying and um and that's what i meant by hip checking him um and the best part of this best part is uh the qb who just did that to him stands over top of him and the defenseman and another defenseman comes over like to check on his teammate and <laughs> the backup qb who just hip checked him like puts his hand in his face and his face mask and that is just that's just like feeling yourself gold he's like he's he didn't break eye contact with the guy on the ground and he's pushing the other guy's face mask away <laughs> i think that's so cool man um and all that shows that he is ready to be the starter um it, it shows that he's tough he's got charisma you got to be charismatic as a as a qb which people who don't really know um uh, football that well don't might not know that how smart and charismatic you have to be to be like the starting franchise quarterback um, and he's focused because he made that throw in in pressure and he has the team his team's back and those are like all the things that you need as a starting QB uh, and he showed that all the you know the filmmaker showed that all in um, you know a minute or two minutes and this is just you know it's the best part of the movie um and there's some humor built into that sequence uh just to you know make it even better um all right so actually this is interesting um <laughs> so talking about racism so that's the end of my my book report on the <laughs> on the movie. <laughs> no one's ever said that before. That's the end of my book report on the movie. Um, so yesterday, uh, I, let's play a game. Now that we're over with the racist, uh, the race, racist, not racist, mo racial movie. Um, so let's play a game called, is it racist? <laughs> so a black guy came up to me and said, uh, I look like Fabio. Is the verdict in? Is it racist? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> um, that's it for Is It Racist? Thank you for playing. Um, so uh, just a little bit update on my romantic life or whatever. Unromantic life, I should say. Uh, um, that, that doesn't even sound right either. But anyway, so some weeks are better than others. And, and this week was good, but it had unprompted um, seemingly like flashbacks of my past relationship. And that obviously doesn't feel good because I like I'm not with them. I learned one of the things I should do is I should say, uh, yeah, I'm listening. Like when when that when that comes up, I I have to be like open to what 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 is inside me that needs to express something. If that makes sense. So what I've been doing is either like super diving into it and analyzing what does this mean? Why did this come up now? Um, why this memory out of all my memories in my whole life? Um, and uh or i've been like completely like shutting it down and distracting myself and both of those don't seem to work so now i'm gonna try be like okay i feel you i hear you 
I'm listening. Like, go go for it. Like, play out what what you want to play out, and then I'll evaluate how does that make me feel, and uh, and just listen to myself, because I think as a people pleaser, uh, I think about other people too much sometimes, which even saying out loud doesn't feel right to me. Like thinking about other people always seems like the right move, but then you don't take care of yourself and it's like, you're you, so you should be taking care of yourself. It's great to take care of others also, but you can't just not take care of yourself. Um, so yeah, you, I have to check in with myself um, and see if how I feel and, you know, what I could do to help it if it needs help. Um, and then this was last week uh, that I forgot to talk about. And I actually wrote more stuff down that I forgot to to write down or to put in my notes to read this off now. But so that'll be next week again. Um, but I get afraid. Um, and this isn't again, this isn't all the time. Um, but in my worst moments, I get afraid uh, thinking back um, and I wonder if my ex really ever loved me um, and that's like super sad to to wonder if if like that the love was real um, and y you know did she did she really love me or um, was it just she had low standards and I was really nice? I don't know, that is like too deep for me to, not deep, but too real for me to really even know. I mean, even if I asked her, which I would never do, um, would she tell the truth? Would she even know? I don't know. Do I even know what her love is at this point? <laughs> uh, but my therapist helped me realize that um, most likely that's me feeling not worthy of love now. Um, so I like retroactively think back oh was it always like this or something something like that because um, I felt worthy when we f were first together but then when someone says they don't love you anymore well she never really said that but um, in fact she said the opposite but um, so that makes me feel a little bit better <laughs> honestly but uh, but there's not a more blatant rejection than breaking up with you or yeah, getting broken up with. So, um, so that obviously breaks down the, your love of yourself a little bit. Like if you're sane at all, um, but I'm a sensitive dude, man. And, uh, <sighs> I don't know. Some people would be like totally over this by now. And, um, you know, I guess I'm not, and uh, that's okay. You know, is, are you are you ever over it? I think we talked about this before, but are you ever over it or you just forget about it? I think you get these ties to people and, and, um, and that's just how it is forever. And uh, maybe you don't see them in the rest of your life but if you do see them, you're like, you're right back to where you were, or it's still like, wow, it's not the same, but we still have this like emotional tie or something. I don't know if that makes sense. All right, dude, that's it. I don't freaking care anymore. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but um, I'm really glad that you came. Dude, I'm matching. Yellow, yellow. Um, yellow. Uh, <laughs> a stupid joke <laughs> that's a good one to end on dude i love you guys you know what to do smash the comments hit the like button 
do other things that who cares about. Um, but I love you guys. And I know I say that every week, but um, don't forget that I also probably don't know what love even really is. So keep that in mind. <laughs> All right, that's it. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow.